In today's video you are going to learn the ultimate tool to analyze trading consistency, which is the Monte Carlo simulation, so by the end of the video you will be able to create this chart in Microsoft Excel, and interpret it properly. We are also going to fully analyze two examples of equity curves so you can understand how to tell the difference between a robust and a fragile equity curve. Let's first begin by understanding the idea behind the Monte Carlo simulation. A Monte Carlo simulation is a statistical technique directed to the goal of finding the probability distribution of an experiment using random sampling. To understand the meaning of this statement, we must grasp the idea of probability distribution and random sampling, otherwise the simulations will seem to have little use and the trader will fail to derive the proper interpretation from the results. A probability distribution simply means a function that displays the probabilities of occurrence of different possible outcomes of an experiment. In our case, the experiment is the series of trades that we will analyze. Notice that if you could go back in time and act in the same way to produce such series of trades, the results would be different due to a lot of variables that are outside the control of the trader. Even though your approach to trading would be the same, factors like luck and chance would change the shape of your equity curve. The probability distribution built in the Monte Carlo simulation will display many of the possible equity curves that could have occurred beyond of the original equity curve, and that includes the best and the worst possible scenarios. To perform this probability distribution function, the Monte Carlo simulation will shuffle the order of trades with random sampling in each simulation. This simply means that the order of trades will be randomly shuffled and then plotted on a chart to see how this randomization would affect the equity curve in question. By randomly resampling the order of trades, performing a considerable number of simulations, and then plotting all of them together on a chart, the trader will be able to visualize the robustness of his equity curve by observing the shape of the simulations. For example, a fragile equity curve will display a chaotic shape, and a robust equity curve will display an orderly shape, but that will become clearer later on when we see the actual charts. Before we move forward, you should be aware of the concepts of robust and fragile in this context. A robust equity curve is the one that will survive in the long term no matter how bad the trading conditions become, and it's the one that allows traders to be wrong most of the times without making the curve collapse. A fragile equity curve is the one that will collapse if the trader doesn't maintain an almost perfect performance all the time, and it is very vulnerable to change in market conditions and the emotional stability of the trader. To make a simple analogy, a robust equity curve is like a large cargo ship in a sea storm. The ship will navigate slowly, but it is strong enough to go against the big waves, and it will eventually reach its destination intact. The fragile equity curve is like a speedboat in a sea storm. The speedboat will go really fast, but it will collapse in the first big wave that it encounters, and therefore, it will never reach its destination. One last idea before we begin with the Monte Carlo simulations is the idea of statistical significance. In order to produce meaningful results in a serious statistical test, we need a sufficient amount of data. The bigger the amount of data we have, the more trustworthy our analysis will be. For example, if we analyze a series of 100 trades, we will have much more information than if we analyze a series of 5 trades, even if we are talking about the same series of trades. In other words, the larger the amount of trades you analyze, the larger the statistical significance, and therefore, the results become more trustworthy, so the bottom line is that you should always avoid analyzing small samples of trades and you should always try to analyze the largest amount of trades possible. With all of that said, let's learn how to create a Monte Carlo simulation in Microsoft Excel. The first step is copying and pasting the trade by trade column 100 times in another spreadsheet. This is how we are going to create the random shuffling process for all simulations. Microsoft Excel has limited capabilities to work with random shuffling, so to make this process less labor-intensive, we need a third-party plugin that can be found in ablebits.com. Just go to their website that is in the video description and click the free download button. Even though this is a paid plugin, you can have a 30-day free trial to test it. In this plugin, we will have a function called shuffle cells, and that's what we will use to shuffle all of our 100 simulations for each equity curve. We need to select all 100 trade by trade columns, and then click on the Able Bits Tools panel, then click on the Randomize button, and then on the Shuffle Cells button.
This will open the shuffle panel, and you need to make sure that the box that says My Column has one header row is checked. You also need to choose the option that says Cells in each column. After that you can press the blue shuffle button. By doing that you will be creating the random sampling of trades for each one of the 100 trade by trade columns. After the shuffling is complete, you will notice that the numbers in each column will be randomly distributed. The next step is to create the equity columns for all 100 of these trade by trade columns that have been randomly sampled. Each cell in this new column will add trade by trade to create the equity curve. We will select the first column, and then click the Insert tab in Excel, click the Insert Line or Area Chart button, and then click on the Line with Markers option. This will create the first simulation and plot it on a graph. To observe all the other 99 simulations, we simply grab the bottom right corner of the first column, and then extend it all the way until the last column. For better visualization, once the chart is created, you will press the plus sign next to the chart and remove the grid lines and legend. The chart you see is the final Monte Carlo simulation for the equity A. You will repeat the exact same process for the equity B to obtain its Monte Carlo simulation as well. Once you have both simulations, you will place them side by side so we can derive the important observations that the Monte Carlo simulations allow us to perceive. Each line in the graphs is a simulation of the original equity curves. In a fragile equity curve, the lines will be more spread out and chaotic in the graph, and you will also notice that the worst case scenario generated in the probability distribution is fatal. In fact, many of the simulations were indeed fatal to the equity curve. These are the signs you should pay attention to if you want to tell if your equity curve is fragile. It's not just the fact that the best case scenarios are possible, but the fact that there are many scenarios where the curve will collapse. That tells you that if you continue to trade using the technical and risk structure of equity A, you will eventually lose your capital, and it's not going to be a gentle nor gradual process. This is the time to stop and reevaluate how you are trading and make the proper changes. On the other hand, in a robust equity curve, we can see that the lines are not too spread out, and you can tell that most lines look similar to one another. Another important detail to notice is that even the worst possible scenarios in a robust equity curve are still pretty good. The interpretation that we can derive from a simulation like this is that the trade structure that generated this curve is solid, and it is very likely that it will withstand the storms that eventually hit the market. This is precisely where you want to be as a trader. Hopefully the difference between the two Monte Carlo simulations and the information that they can give became clear enough to you. If you enjoy these videos, please help support the channel by clicking the like button, subscribing to the channel, and leaving your feedback below in the comment section. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next videos.